The impact of plastic pollution on the environment and on human beings is profound. So why then do we keep producing single-use plastics? Well, perhaps it's because we rarely stop to think about what happens to plastic after we've thrown it away. At the University of Sheffield, Professor Rachel Rothman leads a project called Plastics, Redesigning Single Use. Experts are drawn from across academia, business and policy to work together to try and create a sustainable future. My research is all about how we use plastic more sustainably. So plastic is amazing. It's lightweight, it's durable, it's cheap, it's versatile. But when we finished using it, it can cause big problems if it ends up where it shouldn't be in the environment. So what we look at is how we can reduce the environmental footprints while still retaining the benefits of plastics. Sustainability is a balance and it will always be a balance between lots of different factors. It's a balance between different environmental factors, and it's also a balance between economic and social aspects as well. So my research focuses on the life cycle assessment of plastics, which means going all the way from raw materials, getting the oil or whatever the, the feedstock might be, converting it into plastic, turning that plastic into a product, using that product, and then what happens at end of life, whether that's recycling or reuse or incineration or landfill. And life cycle assessment is a tool we use that looks at that whole life cycle to assess the environmental impacts. Those environmental impacts include carbon footprint, but also things like ecotoxicity and land use and water use and other important environmental factors that we need to think about. We have a project called Many Happy Returns, which looks at how we can reuse plastic. And reusing plastic is the best option. After we've reduced as far as we can, the next thing we should be doing is reusing as many times as possible before then recycling when we're finished with it. This is a single-use coffee cup, and millions of these are used every day. This is the reusable coffee cup. It's much more durable, it's heavier, it has more material in it, and we need to use it about 15 to 20 times for it to be better on a carbon footprint basis than the single-use cup. At the university, we used to use 87,000 plastic milk bottles like this in our cafes every year. Now, an alternative for reuse could be to use glass milk bottles like these, but for a cafe that doesn't make sense, and so in fact we've moved to larger metal churns for bulk delivery of milk. This is an example of a single-use plastic bottle. It's designed to be used once and thrown away. This one is a bit heavier, it's a bit thicker, it's more durable. And what you can see round it is the scuff marks, and that's because this one is a reusable plastic bottle. And the scuff marks are because it's gone round and round a bottling plant. And every time it goes round and knocks into the other bottles, it gets more scuffed. And wouldn't it be great if instead of looking for clear plastic being a good thing, that we all thought, yeah, this bottle is more scuffed. That means it's been reused more times and is more environmentally sustainable. The commercial applications of the team's research are hugely wide ranging. It's very easy to design a plastic product, which is great when you make it, but if it has huge emissions and environmental impacts at end of life, it's actually not a good product. We need to think about the whole system, all the way from making a product through using it to how we get rid of it or recycle it when we're finished with it. I think there are two key challenges with reuse. One is to get the user to engage with it, so will people return a usable, a reusable container? Will they take the reusable option in the first place? And the other is to get the businesses to engage with reuse because it can mean redesigning your shelves or your shop or having washing facilities when you maybe didn't before. So there's two separate challenges there and both are important in order to make reuse mainstream. So what subjects and interests are necessary for a career in sustainable plastics? What's most important is that you have a passion for sustainability and wanting to make the world better in some way. And you could bring in any of the school subjects to that. So from a science perspective, 
chemistry, you can look at how are the materials made, how do you process them. Engineering, we can look at the environmental impacts and the durability of different plastics products. Within linguistics, we can look at how do people talk about plastics and how do we change that narrative to encourage people to engage with plastic. Within the Many Happy Returns project, we have more than 40 people working together from chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, chemists, physicists, linguists, psychologists, social scientists and human geographers. And it's only by combining all of those different angles together that we can start to understand the whole system to design something that people will actually use to environmental benefit. There are lots of different career routes and I think the important thing is to find a subject which you're interested in and then apply it in a way which can make a difference. We need to be creative, we need to be thinking about how can we change a current system, not how are we wedded to the system that currently exists. I find it fascinating to look at how can we encourage people to do the thing that makes environmental sense. I'm very passionate about sustainability and about our environment and I can see lots of things we could do that would be better and working out how to encourage other people to do those things is what really drives me forward. Are there downsides to alternative materials? Because I suppose the temptation is just to say, well, this is a better material than that plastic, the old fashioned plastic, so I'll use this and then I can just carry on as, as I did before. Yeah, we have to be very careful if we're thinking, let's just substitute one material for another and keep everything else the same. So plastic is great because it's cheap and it's light and it does have a reasonably low carbon footprint. It's a problem when it ends up in the environment. But if we, for example, switch to a metal container instead of a plastic one, it's heavier, it involves a lot of processing. That container has a higher carbon footprint. So we might have removed the problem if it ended up in a hedgerow or in the water, or it may be less likely to end up there. But actually some of the other impacts will be more so it's really important we always look at the whole system and not just the material and where's your research heading over the next decade or so well hopefully we'll all be reusing a lot more in a decade's time so we'll need to look less at at reuse as a whole it will become commonplace but there are some things which are a lot easier to reuse than others and coffee cups are a good example water bottles lots of people now have a reusable water bottle and we're cutting down on the amount of single use but there are other things that we use in plastics, in devices. If you look around your house, almost everything has plastic in it. And some of them are very complex and multi-layer and maybe hard to reuse. So I, I see over the next decade as starting to advance into more complex systems to look at, well, how do we encourage the reduction and the reuse in those? Ah, so it's in the design and the manufacture of mobile phones or of everything. Televisions or whatever it might be. Yeah, and we really, that reduce, reuse, recycle is hugely important. So that design at the beginning, we need to look at, well, how can we reduce use of resources in the first place? And what we've done over many years is design things for the use. And we've kind of ignored what happens when we finish using them. And what's important is that we design for the end of their life as well as for their use phase. And that will help us make the, the technological tweaks in design to make the end of life more sustainable. Well, Rachel, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>